Guys, welcome to the fairy tale country in the middle of Europe that nobody knows about, Andorra. The tax paradise and the place of residence of half of the Spanish best tennis players, including Albert Ramos, Roberto Carvajal Baena, Jaume Munar, and Pedro Martinez. It attracts successful people with its forgiving tax regulations, beautiful landscapes, and high standard of living. It's kind of like a less known Monaco, but for those who know, no. And today, I will be taking you there to visit one of the most beautiful court locations that I've ever played on. I'll show you some of the cool places to visit, the best restaurants, and also show you where to get the best prices for tech, watches, and jewelry, as those things are way cheaper in Andorra. Alright, let's head out. After packing the dozens of rackets and Shana into the car, Nikki sat at the wheel and we headed out. The road to Andorra from Barcelona takes two and a half hours, and if you avoid the tolls, which makes the roadway more beautiful, it becomes three. Not big deal. Whoa! What is this weather, guys? Oh, the air is just oh, beautiful, beautiful. Nikita is trying to turn around over there. Uh, seems like he's struggling quite a bit, uh, but yeah. What are you doing? Thanks to the fog, though, the road wasn't looking too beautiful until... We ended up staying at Hotel Stark by Pierre and Vacances Premium, which is a four-star hotel, but honestly feels like a five-star. I'm assuming that it's the lack of spa that didn't allow for the fifth star, but the rest was great. Oh, no way, the parking? Pfft. It was like 30 euros per night, but it took us like 20 minutes to get in because it's an elevator parking. Horrible, but the lobby and the rooms were great. I don't remember what the hotel is called, but it seems it seems really nice. The photos of the lobby in the on the on the website were horrible, and I was like horrible lobby, but the rooms are nice, whatever. And the lobby actually turns out to be quite nice, honestly. Like everything, the interior design is is decent. And then we also yeah went to the rooms, and they look way better than on the photos. And it's usually the other way around. So whoever took the photos, they need a fire him or or her. I don't know. We got the room number five oh six. Oh, okay, this is not that, all right. First of all, this bathroom and just this bath. Um, and then we have the main, the main area with a massive king or queen size bed or whatever. Carpets all over the place and a wonderful table. And yeah, what, what, what else can I say? I'll give this room a, like an eight out of 10. It's a, it's a really good room. But again, like the guy who took the photos of this place is just, useless because it looks so much worse on the photos and then there's the beautiful view which uh, we'll uh, show you now during uh, daylight because at night it kind of looks cute but you don't see the mountains after checking in it was starting to get a little late and we had a table booked at what's considered to be one of the best places to have a steak in andorra in terms of price to quality ratio guys so we've arrived to what's probably the best place for meat in Andorra, it's called Surf, Surf, Surf Parents Other. I don't know what's up with the naming. It's an Argentinian place. It's called Surf. It's, it's in the mountains, and they serve meat. Like, I don't know what's up with the branding, but but the meat is really good. So yeah, follow me. Yeah, the naming is quite debatable, that's for sure, but the meat there is oh my god. The design and the atmosphere is alright, nothing special, but they're dog friendly, and their onion soup is just. <laughs> The main dish of the place is the meat, of course, it's Argentinian, so it's really good and also not that expensive. The bill was like 100 euros for 4 people and for the quality of the meat that you get, that's really good and I'd even say cheap. Alright, picked up Shana, now we're headed back to the hotel to have a quick nap in tomorrow. Tomorrow we have a tough day because it's, it's going to be a shopping day. Because as you know, everything is way cheaper in Andorra, so whenever you come, you, you might as well, you know, buy some stuff that is just cheaper so yeah ahead of us was a tough day filled with a lot of playing tennis filming and shopping but first let's start with the mountains so Andorra is famous for its mountains and ski resorts and yes skiing here is great but we're tennis players so we're not gonna ski all right lads we're skiing Woo! Guys, believe it or not, this was pretty much the first time I tried skiing in my life and uh, well, although the first day was kind of boring and I couldn't understand what the hell I was doing, 
by the end of the third day I was flying around the slopes and uh, really enjoying it to be honest. So we have a little bit of a problem as we were riding this, this thingy up, we sat on one of these benches and uh, yeah, one of my skis got, uh, got stuck and uh, unlocked. Yeah guys, so I don't know about the skiing itself, but these views, oh my god. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's just, just this is something, something worth visiting in Dora for. Like wherever you look, it's just beautiful. Shit. During the lunch break, we went through the restaurant at the ski resort and I really don't recommend it as the views were nice, but the food was horrible and really, really overpriced. The mountains here though are impressive. I don't know if you noticed, but the last four or five videos that I published were filmed here. So we were spending quite some time in these mountains. So here are some beautiful shots and views of the ambience. <laughs> After finishing our filming, we packed up and headed back to the city. By the way, for those of you wondering what this tower is, that's a spa. I think it's like the biggest one in Europe and it has an outside pool that is quite cool in winter. And we of course had to check it out. The entrance to this place was like 60 euros per person and for that money it's definitely not worth it. Otherwise though, it wasn't bad, but the water was kind of cooler than the comfortable temperature and uh, I guess it's a cool thing to check out once, but it's definitely not a place that I would visit again in the nearest future. Well, at least the warm marble benches were kind of nice. I also spotted a tennis court, which I had no idea about. Gonna take you there next time we go to Andorra. All right, time to go shopping. So yeah, there you go. This is the main street of Andorra where, uh, where all tourists come because it's full of shops of tech, uh, watches and, 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 and stuff and like tech for decent prices because of the of the good taxes and stuff and it's just very beautiful especially in winter with all these beautiful decorations and yeah the main street of Andorra is filled with tech shops because that's what people get when they come here and DJI released a new camera that I've been wanting to get so this was just perfect timing it turned out to be a hundred euros cheaper than if I bought it in Spain so that's a pretty noticeable difference although usually the difference is not that big. As I said, apart from the tech, it's also quite cost effective to buy watches and jewelry here. Stores of all the most important brands can be found here, including Patek, Rolex and AP. Let alone the cigarettes that are sold absolutely everywhere because those turn out to be like 30% cheaper than in Europe. Another interesting fact is that some of the items that are prohibited in Spain and France, for example, are allowed for sale in Andorra. So people come here to get their tasers, pepper sprays, and other kinds of weapons and then I don't really know what they do with them afterwards but I guess it is what it is. Anyways, enough of shopping, let's do what we came here to do, let's play some tennis. The courts that we were planning to play on are located relatively close to the center of the city. An hour of renting this court costs 16 euros which is pretty normal for this kind of facility. As soon as we entered the courts area, I immediately got worried as it was not looking nearly as good as I remembered it to. There was construction going on and it seemed like the first episode of the series where I take you to beautiful court locations was about to fail miserably, but nevertheless... Guys, uh, we arrived to the club and turns out there's construction going on and uh, the reason for this construction is that because of all those top tennis players that are training now in Andorra, they don't have enough courts to play in winter because, well, it's not the best weather. As you can see right now, all the courts are kind of wet. And when it snows, it's even harder to play tennis. So kind of especially for them, they're building uh, indoor courts here. And uh, that's why it's not, it's not the most beautiful place right now, but it's still, it's still pretty nice. I was expecting to play on hard courts, but I guess we're doing Wimbledon. Uh, I can say no to that, uh, yeah. So after doing a quick warm-up, bringing the Empire chair to film some highlights and playing with Shauna a little bit, we opened the can of balls and started the warm-up. Let's actually trying to keep three balls in. Both of us. <laughs> nice. Ah! The, the, the courts are super fast with new balls and with this altitude, it's, they're just flying all over the place. Su super hard to get used to them. And also the, the tension on the strike it is like super low. I'm not used to that either. But we're still having fun, you know, that's what matters. So we're taking the first few shots on these beautiful courts. Well, not that beautiful, but just the ambience here is, is incredible. First of all, the air is super clean, very different. It's kind of harder to breathe, but you can feel that it's clean and then you can just 
look to your right and there's a massive mountain here. And then if you don't want to look to the right, you look to your left and there's another beautiful mountain that is kind of covered by the trees right now from here. But yeah, it's an interesting, interesting experience. After doing the warm-up, we tried to film some trick shot content for our Instagram page. Not gonna spoil you any details, feel free to check it out ourselves. Here's our Instagram page. So what's my verdict on this court location and the overall trip then? Well, the courts, although pretty beautiful and surrounded by awesome mountains, were under construction and nasty and all wet and whatever, so I'll give them like a six. The hotel was great and the price, although not cheap, wasn't anything out of this world. A night in a single or double room like the ones that we stayed in was like 150 euros per night. It doesn't have a spa and the parking is horrible, but the rooms and the lobby and the overall ambience is quite nice. So I'll give it a solid seven out of 10. The restaurant serve was pretty nice, but we went there twice and the second time the quality of the meat wasn't at the same level. So I'll also give it a seven out of 10. As for Andorra itself, what a beautiful place. Maybe not the paradise for those who like to go out every weekend and party a lot, but definitely the paradise for us tennis players who are dedicated to their sport and people who are looking for a comfortable and chill lifestyle. Glad this is it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Let me know down in the comments below if you want to see more episodes like this one from other beautiful court locations. And Glad's a quick announcement. There will be a rebranding taking place. I will be changing the name of the channel pretty soon, so don't be surprised. I think the next video is going to be with the same name, but the one after that is already going to be brand new. So <laughs> don't be surprised. Glad. This is it for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I will, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.